and the, and the play on the words. <laughs> you don't know where you need to go. I hope you got your prints in. Maryville going up against MSNT. Skylix going up against Bernie. Let's get into the match. It is another great day to be on the pitch with my good friend, Travis Hale, Subi Smash. Welcome back to the CRL party. It's been a day so far, and is it a banana peel game? I'll let you take a crack at answering that one. You know, I don't know if we're going to get a cherry on top with this one. I don't know if we're going to see Maryville fall, but my oh my, would it hurt the ego of Calix? Because he has talked a lot, especially after transferring across the pond, basically saying, you know, it's it's that free low. We're coming into <laughs> NA to take over. Free real estate to be determined for sure. Missouri S&T certainly not a stranger to being put through their paces in the CRL league play system for sure. And I think the, the desk was definitely onto something. It's a real opportunity for Maryville to prove their chops and make Absolutely. sure to take down a team like Missouri S&T as that one's through the middle and easy clear from stealth. Yeah, this is a, a great litmus test for Missouri S&T. They've always been one of those teams as we get some play in the box and Smacks can't catch up to it. Bernie puts another shot on and Stealth gets the save. In comes Knight to save the day for Maryville. Hanging on by a thread, but still not out of the neck of the woods just yet. But I think that if Missouri S&T can take down a roster like Maryville, you know, it does a lot for their confidence because this has always been a team that I felt like has had what it takes to be in the upper echelon. They just can't seem to make it work. A little bit of misdirection on that attack. Strong shot. Tough save from Stealth, the second one required. And oh, there you dumped go. down a bump, and then Knight's gonna come across the net. Some heroics in no the way. net in this game, and it's open back the other way. Oh no! You put your hand in the cookie jar, and you Smacks. get put in timeout. Maryville just baits them into their own half. So many shots on target, but eventually they crash the boards and leave their net wide open. Maryville, take the lead. Little greedy from Smacks for sure. He was going over to, to play some support for his teammate who he thought was about to play a 50, but did not consider what would happen if that one just got put straight on frame. Unfortunately for them, Missouri S&T, some real good attacks, but clearly needing at least a teeny bit of extra firepower to break through this Maryville defense. Yeah, and it's easy to get a little overconfident in a situation like that. When you put up seven shots in basically the first minute of gameplay, mm -hmm. go, okay, this is going right. We just need to be able to find between those sticks. And eventually a team like Maryville, you give them a look downfield like that, and a look like that is even better. Infield pass, absolute money. Alex introducing himself to the play. Really nice dish from Knight. He was out there ranging out, grabbing some boost, and Knight just came over. Nice extra touch to beat the last man. Calix already up for it. Total belief that ball was coming for him. Dead right. Beauty of a shot. Great faith and confidence between teammates for Maryville. All they need to do now is hold on for the second half as we enter into that in game number one. Maryville very much in control of this game. Only three shots on target. Make it four, but make it a third goal from Calix. Everyone getting involved. Don't overthink it. He's just playing the midfield defense, and hey, they all missed very well. That's where you practice the shooting fundamentals. You practice the technique. Make sure you get strong contact. Put it in a decent spot. Calix did all those things. Clinical. And at this point, it's their game to lose, and Missouri s &T, like I was kind of saying, in the buildup as a bump gets put on to bump in. And right now, Maryville just rolling downhill. Found the answer. Just throw it across the middle, and they struggle to stay with it. And there goes Calix again. Same thing as last time. Just waiting in the midfield, waiting for an opportunity. Saw his opening on the left side. And Missouri S&T, whew. You better be like Sisyphus. You got to get under that rock. It's, you got to stop it. <laughs> You know, I think uh, maybe it's a little bit of a case. Another goal for him, maybe. Nope, they get back in time. But it might be a case of uh, Calix hearing Pirelli say, nah, I don't think Calix is the best player on this team. And <laughs> <laughs> he's definitely one that takes things personally. And he took that one personal. He, is, he actually hasn't had to do a whole lot this game. 
Uh, Stealth has made a lot of the saves. Calyx has kind of just been like, cool, I'm, I'm in the right spot at the right time and I'm delivering. He's executing on his job. Because right now it's just hanging on to the ball in his corner and unfortunately gets the boost stolen away. Good opportunity here for Missouri s and A lot of pressure, decent amount of boost build up, but look at Knight just bobbing and weaving through people. Forces bumping to respect him. Two on one. The second shot is directly at him again. Stealth leaving that opportunity by the wayside, but I guess when you got four, you're not too broken up about it. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it'd be nice to get one. Maybe a highlight reel one as well, but for this Maryville roster, it's not about those highlight reel goals. It's not about the insane mechanics. We're seeing what they do best right here. It's being in the right place at the right time and making sure that your teammates trust in you, like that one. Knight knew that shot was gonna be on target, calls off stealth. Stealth rotates beautifully to that side wall, and. Look at where Calix is, waiting patiently at midfield to strike, and here he comes to keep that offense rolling. Maryville, just playing crisp, clean, fundamental Rocket League right now. I think that is the, the proper way to describe it. Fundamental. It's just executing on the basics, making sure you're not misplaying the ball anywhere. Loose one here in the midfield, and actually they're just going to let it work. That one all the way through the seam, and Calix has to find a way out of his own half now. Bobbing and weaving in the air. Float tonight, actually a beautiful touch. Tough to get that much power on it from that position. And free ball here for Missouri s and in garbage time, and even that will get turned aside. <laughs> you know, sometimes you can't even buy one. And against a team like Maryville, it almost seems like they are baiting in their opponents with how no. often it... Seems like that net's wide open, but Maryville gonna take game number one here. Very strong showing from them. Calix was waiting for one more there. He's just parked in that same spot. <laughs> Three for six. You can see if you want to know how to be in position as third man, go back and watch tape of this one. Calix parked the bus there in the midfield. Said, good luck, get it by me. Uh, no one could, and he proceeded to turn them all into the net. So an awesome game from Maryville. But you do have to give a lot of credit. There was a decent chunk of shots here from Missouri s and oh, yeah. That first 90 seconds or so, it was we were peppering the net. It was dangerous. But uh, that's how Missouri s and has always been. They finished last spring basically, you know, 50%. You know, what was it, 8 and 7, I believe you said? It's, yes. They've got to be able to capitalize on the opportunities that are given to them because it's not always going to be an open net. It's not always going to be pretty. you got to be able to find those tight windows, and there were plenty of those little windows that Missouri and s and had the opportunity to throw that ball through, but they just couldn't hit it. And once they start hammering those home, this roster completely changes. This team evolves to that next step. It's true, and it, it did feel like the adapting on the defensive side for Missouri s and started to come online a little bit as that game went on. I think at first they weren't quite expecting what type of pressure Maryville was bringing to them, but that last minute or so, you know, felt like, okay, now they understand what they're up against at the very least. And that quick adaptation is definitely something Missouri s and has put on display. Is here they try and up the pace because they did catch the defense a little flat-footed, took a good touch from Stealth on the wall to keep out an opening goal for Missouri s and And it was a great idea as well. You got that infield pass. Yeah, it's a tough one to connect he on. Recovered. He and recovered. He gets it as no! well, but can't put it on target. Again, accuracy issues paying Missouri s and Oh, Birdie, I could feel it. He got all the way back up to the ceiling and he just had no boost and he was hoping he was on the right line and unfortunately did not nail the timing on the shot. Would have been a pretty thing. Definitely a highlight real goal for there, but what can you say? At least you're not down. You're still at zeros. Uh, yeah, I guess, you know, glass half full. Oh and, my God. But yeah, that one turns no. empty really quick. An own goal strikes in CRL. I say at least you're not down, and lo and behold, Bernie turns it into his own net. <laughs> you can't write that. It's, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's just when, when it's not going your way, it really isn't going your way. And Missouri s and oh. so far six minutes through this, still have yet to find a goal. That's put a huge wrench in the comms for Missouri s and They missed the, the ceiling reset to try and take their first lead of the series. 
Great demo. And then they own goal. They find a demo there in the midfield, but the communication has definitely taken a bit of a hit. Missouri S&T reeling right now. Yeah, it's just one of those plays that, oh, <laughs> just gets a little piece of him to push him out of the way, and Knight doing it all himself. You gotta love the command Knight put on display right there. Able to catch that ball cleanly on the wall, smooth dismount, dodge the demo as you get through the first 50, and put a strong touch towards net, force him into a bad spot. Great bit of shooting from Knight. Was there contact made on that ball and it still went in? I, I feel uh, like that he, ball slowed down on the goal line. I, I feel like I knew before you asked, and now that I'm actively thinking about it, I'm not certain. Sorry, I do that to a lot of people. The more I talk, the dumber I make them. So I will I will try to prevent disagree, that in the future. Disagree. <laughs> oh, but unfortunate turn of events for Missouri S&T as they're down two in a hole yet again. And they've had great plays. They've had opportunities. But in game two, not so much. It just seems like Maryville has completely figured them out. Yeah. They've started to definitely park the bus there in the midfield. Huge opportunity for Stealth. Calix just giving up this ball for free, one-on-one -on -one versus Knight in the net, and he is equal to the task. And to be honest, I, I would let Knight carry the ball out of our own half every time right now if you are uh, Maryville, because it just feels so smooth from him. He's he hasn't really demonstrated any issues with getting through at least one defender. He's just doing a great job of surveying what the defense is affording him. It's just like, okay, cool, you're giving me space. I'm going to air dribble this over you and go for a bump. Or, oh, you're playing close? I know exactly what to do in that situation as well. Just so dynamic on the field right now. And that's what makes this three-headed Hydra of Maryville so dangerous. At any point, they can all pop off. Yep. Just like that great pass off the ceiling. I love how much they're utilizing every single wall in the arena. And the speed from Knight, you can see him there. He wave dashed around the corner to get into the box and push that near side defender out of position. Opened the door for their teammates to walk through. That was a real three-man effort to get the job done there. Oh man, it is just so tough to deal with. And once you find yourself in that hole, it's like you're trying to dig your way out, but you're just putting that dirt all over the side. You can't get out. There's no way to do it. And right now, Missouri S&T, you're down three, about a minute and a half to go. Yeah. Oh What my in gosh. the world? How? Whew. The dude's cooking. Knight is just cooking right now. That, that was pure reaction. The ball pinched at him off the wall. Okay, it went straight towards the net. Okay, they all missed. I turn it in. That was the thought process. <laughs> the speed at which that happened, it just made my jaw jump. Holy Ooh. smokes, no way! <laughs> <laughs> you don't get to see this every day. A straight win on the kickoff, plus a dunk, because Knight did not believe there was any way that that 50 was gonna go straight into his own net. Smacks. Oh. Nice pinch. Hey, I'll give you 10 more tries to do that again. Betcha you, you can't. <laughs> that is, oh, hilarious. I love goals like that. And you know, that's one of the ones that like, okay, hey, look at that. The net's open. We We're can score. <laughs> We're on the board. And you might not claw your way back from this one. Three goals against the team. Like Maryville, it's a tall order for sure but you put yourself in this series. You've at least got yourself on the board and said, okay, they aren't invincible. We can score on them. Can you get that offense to come back to life is also really what you want any of. Huge block from Knight forces me an awkward save from Smacks, wow. but you really do need Missouri S&T to find some way to gain possession because right now, okay, Maryville may have overextended a little bit here. But it doesn't matter. They're, one deep back, and indeed, they just keep fighting for the ball. Double commit, bumping, you gotta win this ball. And the layering from Maryville, and they're all over the pitch right now. Uh, and they're they're overlapping in the best ways. They're, they're creating like this mesh-like offense where if it's not one guy, it's the next. And it just seems like they're playing so much faster and forcing Missouri nice. S&T to play out of Screening. the mud. And yeah, just blocking vision, doing everything that they can. Great display of Rocket League IQ in this game.
Yeah, I mean that jump from stealth, it, it looked so pointless if you if you don't know the game, but he, he was just jumping up to take away space so that they can't go up and clear. Kalix finally whiffs one. <laughs> They dish one across at zero seconds. Maryville up 2-0 in the series. Uh, that was by far and away the most boa constrictor getting choked out type of game I've seen in a while. Well, right. I mean, you look at the shots from Missouri S&T and it's, oh, five. That's not bad. But if you look at the replay, I, I would say probably three and a half minutes through, M Missouri had one shot on target. And then the rest of them... Were they shots? Even the goal that they got, was it a shot on net? No, it's a lucky ball. It goes in, it happens. Like you said, the clamp that Maryville put on in this game and the control of midfield and the blue, see, he seemed like he touched it a little bit on that replay. Like just slowed it down enough. Just a little. Just enough, but because of that bump, it took away Oof. the momentum that he was able to get the ball with and then the rest is physics. But for Missouri right now, you got to generate offense. That's got to be game plan number one, right? Possession, possession, possession. It does generally tend to be the biggest factor when it comes to scoring goals for sure. Because uh, as you saw, any attempt at starting counterattack style gameplay there, uh-uh, you are getting outpaced. Do not try and play the counterattack right. game. Do not go for solid right now. They are faster. They are reading the ball better than you. Do not fall into the trap of king. We can just play three people on defense. You're going to get smoked. You got to have somebody out there. You got to be willing to take some risks. I don't really see them making progress any other way. And you can't play the same game that Maryville's playing either. You can't beat them at it. You can't match them. You've got to be able to counter. And how are you going to do that? Is it going to be some bumps? Is it going to be some demos to try and slow them down? No, you're going to get demoed yourself. Is it going to be infield passes? Now they're going to read those. you got to okay. be able to figure it out on the fly. And right now, it just seems like there's no answer. It's none of the above. D, that's the answer. I did like to see... Uh, Bernie and, and Bump and I think going up for some aggressive 50s here in the midfield. Just force possession off them. Get it out of your own half. Worry about the rest later. Okay, it finds a seam. But you've earned possession. Right. And that's all that you got to start with. And those clears, they're going to happen where it just sneaks through when it shouldn't have. But look at this. They're starting the offense. That ball's coming through. Great read off that back wall from Bernie. But you got to have that follow-up be a little bit quicker. We've got to see someone in midfield and bumping and smacks kind of a little too close, a little too condensed. I'd like to see him spread this field out and force Maryville to do something nice. that they haven't been doing. Ooh, smacks, do you have the control? Ah, and that's where you can really see the other big difference, the mechanical prowess. That control from Knight to lift that through the midfield and you see some players over on Missouri S&T try and emulate and that control is just not quite at the same level and Missouri S&T oh. trying their best to hold off one more push there comes Stell trying to dunk one home and turned aside at the goal line but is it enough at least they're getting out of their own half here in game three Missouri S&T trying to make it a battle here but how long does it last a yeah, nice little push there from bump and he was going for the ball but did get the demo and smacks was wisely playing that third role but immediately turns this ball over as Calix gonna try and get the offense going for Maryville here and yet again another infield pass. This could be an opportunity. Two went up for Maryville and Calix still alive gets turned away from Bernie, saves the day and closes the door on that shot. Like the idea from Calix there, it's, it's nothing fancy. It's just look, if they're gonna clear it, it's gonna go this way. I'm gonna put my car there and see what happens. And you just force the defense to move around you. It's a very dangerous tactic as Smacks. They're keeping one eye open. They know Calix is a shark at the midfield line. So far, backs against the wall. Get there right now, Missouri s and uh, Can't quite get there. They held on for almost three minutes, but Maryville just suffocates them. A nasty bit of bouncing for Bernie to handle in the net. It goes off his teammates at the sidewall, goes directly over his shoulder behind him, loses track of the field because of the camera panning, makes a nice 50, but Calix again finally found an opening. He's got another one here, and that will be 2-0, a kickoff goal for Maryville.
Uh, and this is what we need to see change from Missouri S&T to be one of those successful teams in CRL where you're playing for national championships, playing for world championships. You can't just let the wheels fall off when it starts going wrong. Okay, a team's going to score on you, sure, but the amount of goals that are just added quickly, one Ooh. after another, that's the thing that you can prevent. And right now, they're doing a great job. They weathered the, the third storm that was inbound, but clears like that aren't going to help. They're in play, but can you find a way to capitalize? Bumping, that's a good challenge. Takes away the midfield boost. Okay, they've earned a little bit of space. And here comes Maryville, once again, pushing into this blue half. Missouri and s &T. 90 seconds to get two goals, and that's just to tie it. So far, one shot on target. After that first about three minutes in game number one, it has been all Maryville, all series long. And right now, looking a little oh. vulnerable, but that one goes too wide. Opportunity there, but they can't capitalize. And Smax doesn't have the boost to transfer and try and convert it on the second chance. Hardball into the middle, Bumpin just has to dive at it. Missouri S&T feeling the pressure. They sent the house and honestly it worked. It broke oh, no. the doors down, but the finish wasn't there and Calix will deliver the dagger right between the ribs. He gets his second hat trick of the series off of the mistouch from Smax. First one didn't go, but gets the double tap to put it in. It's all smiles on the side of Maryville as they're 52 seconds away from getting a sweep and pushing their record to seven and two in the Western Conference. A great show from Maryville and Missouri S&T, you know, they didn't play badly, but you could definitely feel perhaps a, a caliber difference specifically in the mechanical control department. I feel like, uh, you know, given the rest of the season, if Missouri S&T takes a look at this game and says, look, if we just find a better way to control the ball out of our own half, we get a handle on some of these air dribbles in difficult situations, we get ourselves out of a few more tight spots and we can generate some more offense that way. Because you'd see, see what the offense was capable of as Knight strips the ball with 10 seconds and scores number four. But you could see what the defense was and offense was capable of on Missouri S&T, especially in that game one. They definitely had something cooking there when they're riding high on the confidence. And as soon as they ran into the brick wall, all that confidence went out the window. So if you start to see a little bit of success earlier from Missouri S&T via execution, who knows what could happen if they ended up replaying Maryville. I definitely agree with you on that one, but on this date in time, looks as though... One's their own. Uh, is it gonna happen? Uh, Knight says, nope, you don't get one to go, and Maryville took them three games, four goals in each of those three to take down Missouri S&T. They did it seemingly rather easily but they have a long road ahead of them still if they want to really live up to the talk that they were chirping about on uh, social media. Yeah, this was uh, the real hammer and nail game. Uh, <laughs> Maryville definitely the hammer in this instance, <laughs> beating up on, uh, on Missouri S&T, but that's the way she goes. Missouri S&T gotta go lick their wounds take a second, collect themselves, but Maryville, as you say, advancing ever higher, seven and two now, continuing a dangerous run in the Western Conference. As we take a look at some of the series highlights and Calix, definitely a big part of the scoring. Uh, he only came into this series at about 0.8 goals per game, but here he was just always in the right spot at the right time. Yeah, I mean, two games with some hat tricks, not too shabby, but you know, Calix, I know you're going to listen to this back. You're going to watch it back. No assists? You're better than that. <laughs> he didn't need the assists. No, man. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Great series from all of them all around. And like you were commenting, I mean, his role in the third man position was clinical. He was always right there where he needed to be, and he was never an inch closer than he needed to be. Nothing went over his head. The one goal that Missouri did score was some errant pinch that goes off, and you kind of just let him have it. All right, that's going to happen. Nothing we could do against that. Outside of that, 
a perfect series from Maryville in this one. Yeah, absolute stunner and really looking forward to seeing them take on some of the tougher opponents over in the Western Conference as the season continues. But upcoming next, some players you may remember from previous seasons of CRL, Cosmic Flippy and Samba make their return to the pitch over on Columbia Silver versus UT Arlington with Adverse and Nava. So stick around. You're watching CRL 